literally just a minute ago, it was uh, 2,000 and 4,000, right? So, but that's the game with Amazon, right? Amazon, this is what you get. And then in the middle here, So here's the situation today on Amazon. Once it took, once it broke um, below here, below the box, I took the puts at 3,100, right? So I bought four and said, hey, I'm going to take this trade to the downside, expecting it to hit 3,086 at a minimum, but I overfocused a little too much of this area here and completely missed this area here, which obviously had way more support right around here, which is where it bounced. Now, when it broke back above the pivot, I was like, ooh. It's getting a little dicey and obviously it happened right around the 1030 mark 1040 right so we know that that's a potential reversal so what I did was I went back and I said you know what let me convert this back into a uh, spread giving me this opportunity minus 1350 on the downside cutting my loss in half basically if it does continue to go up or if it reverses and then if it goes up, I'll make $650. But I was like, you know what? Looking at the markets, looking at the news, and looking at everything that's happening today, it is more likely that it is going to continue to come back now. So I said, okay, well, let me take a look at this chart. And I'm like, okay, well, if it breaks back below this pivot, I'm going to go ahead and jump back in, which I did. And I took the 3110s now. So now I took, I went a little bit further in the money and said, you know what? I'll take the 3110s. Uh, I added uh, two. I mean, three at around 12.85, and then I added another uh, two, two more, or was it three or two? Three and two, it was a combination. And then I added a few more to make it an even five. I had 13 and change, bringing my price down to 13.15. So now I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, well, what's going on here, right? Now we're being a little choppy. I'm like, okay, this is kind of annoying. It's not breaking the way I needed to break. So I'm looking for solutions here. So I'm like, okay, well, what can I do to make sure I lock in my profits and wait for this market to decide to what to do. So what I'm looking at here, guys, is the 3105s, right? So at a minimum, I need I can't let these go below. Um, oh, so this is what it looks like now. So I'll lose 5900 if this does if decide to reverse, right? As you can see here. I'm like, okay, well I don't I'm not gonna stand for that. And you know, being in the market is choppy. So I was like, okay, well let me see what my minimum is. If I add to these ones that I sold here on the four, since I have four and five, I can go all the way up to nine, so I can add five more. So what's my minimum? Okay, so for me to break even on the upside, 11.85 is a minimum. Okay, I lose two dollars there at the close. At the peak, if it closes around this area, we're looking at around twenty-two thousand dollars. And if it goes down, we're still making four hundred, five five hundred bucks. All right. So I was like, all right, well, what if I sell it at around? 1260, which is where we are now around there, right? 373 will peak at 2281 and 873. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep watching and I'm watching it very, very closely because obviously I don't want to get caught in a reversal. I am expecting it to break down potentially below 3070 easily if it can break this support here. Um, so obviously, the lower it goes, the more potential for profit I have here. So at 1260, this is what I'll do, right? But let's say we go all the way to 22. Right? 22, we're looking at 55 on one side, 58. And at the peak, now I'm not expecting it to stay in the middle here, guys. 77, 7500 on. So that's not bad. So we'll watch this before I put in any trades. Um, I'll go ahead and start recording again, but we'll see what happens. Okay? It is quitting time on this one. I'm going to go ahead and lock this in, guys. I'm going to put in the order on my phone at 12.30, 12.35. going to put in those five. Obviously, I can't let this go below um, <clears throat> the 11.85 I mentioned, right? So it's bouncing back up. And again, I, I just noticed I'm paying attention to this one-minute chart, which is kind of annoying because obviously it makes you a little bit jittery. But noticing how I'm reacting to it now and I'm looking at it, it just failed to break this level once again. I don't like this double bottom. So I'm just going to call it a day and lock in my profits. Uh, so no matter what, let's take a look at what it looks like now. I'm making <clears throat> at least 223 on one side and 723 on the other, right? It's kind of annoying because it was literally just a minute ago. It was uh, 2,000 and 4,000, right? So, but that's the game with Amazon, right? Amazon, this is what you get. And then in the middle here, we're looking at around $2,600. If it closes anywhere between 3098 
right? My profits go up as uh, we close anywhere between this area here, uh, which is a little annoying. I still I am expecting the move to continue lower, but I'm not liking this action here. I wanted it to kind of break. Once it broke this level here, it would have been uh, pretty good, you know. Uh, I would have been pretty confident on the move, but this uh, choppiness, especially because these expire today, um, the time decay and everything playing into it is going to be kind of annoying. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, so as you can see here, we're at 713, and obviously I already showed you what this profit is going to look like. So we're either going to be at 723 or 223, um, and anywhere between that uh, up here, depending on where we close. So obviously I'm just going to let these expire uh, and, and see what happens, and then obviously they'll take their cut, 25 bucks or whatever, and we'll see how this one ends up playing out. But I'm not liking this. I kind of wanted it to just break through here. Um, you know, as I was looking at it, I was like, oh my God, I'm looking at the one minute chart. But it is a little annoying. This area here obviously had us a little uh, strong support, as you can see here on the 30 minute. Uh, I kind of wanted it to break right through and head down to 3086, which would be the next level I'm looking for. But it's just messing around too much, right? So looking at this, look, you have some positive divergence here. Uh, so obviously this one was lower here on the RSI. This was a little higher. This one came lower. This is a little higher. So I'm just looking at everything, looking at the time of the day. The longer I stay here sitting on this computer, the more uh, distracted I'll get, the more um, my emotions start to play in, right? After an hour, hour and a half, you kind of start to uh, make mistakes. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Wells Fargo locked in $1,000 on that one. So we'll leave it alone. Uh, let's take a look at Wells Fargo, right? So let's take a look at Wells Fargo. This one again, I did the 33 puts, came up on the scanner, jumped in, said, all right, and uh, the low was 32, 31.91. Uh, I locked it in uh, by very, basically converting it into a spread as well, guys. So check it out. So it comes back up to 33. So in this scenario, I'm expecting it to stay lower and not to come back up higher. So I didn't convert it into a regular credit vertical um, for it. So this would be more of a debit spread if you originally did it where you were um, buying, right? But what I did was I bought the 33s and then as it came down lower uh, and lower, I sold the 3250s uh, at 55 cents. I bought these at 46, sold these at 55, and this is the result, right? 180 on one side, if it does happen to reverse all the way to 33, um, my profit at the time when I locked this in was at about a thousand. But I was like, hey, if I convert this to a spread, I'll pull out an extra $180. So the question is, well, why don't you just close and just take your $1,000? Like, well, you know, I can give myself an opportunity to make a little bit more. Why wouldn't I? Let me put time decay on my side. And that's all it is. I mean, there's no risk. It's not like I'm adding additional risk by uh, converting it into a spread, right? So, and again, if I did it the other way and I was expecting it to reverse, now I can... Uh, it would look the opposite way this chart, right? So what I'm doing here is adding a little bit more without adding any additional risk. And that's why I like doing these. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. I'm pretty much done for the day. Um, I'm not gonna mess around anymore. Just it, just the failure for it to break on Amazon, it's kind of annoying. So I'm just gonna leave it alone. Yeah, coming back to 3100, uh, 3, above 3100, it's really, really annoying. So, but anyway, guys, I uh, hope you guys have a great day and I will catch you next time.